Sometimes I've been known to ask myself weird questions that probably no one else cares about, and I'm guessing this is one of those times. My wife and I went to see Avril Lavigne on her Greatest Hits tour the other night, and while watching her perform Complicated, she had like the old music video playing on the screen behind her while she was performing it live, and I started to think, what happened to those guys? Who were they? What did they do in their career? You know the guys. These three. I might be the only person who has ever asked that question, but if you're curious about random things like I am, then this video is for you. So if you end up liking this video, please consider giving it a like, share it with a friend if you think they might be interested in random things like this, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss more of my random questions that lead to hours of fruitless research. Originally, I assumed that these guys were just actors. They were guys hired because they had that kind of punk adjacent look that Avril was known for and made famous. But it turns out, as I'm sure a lot of people knew, but I didn't because I never thought about it, they were her actual band. But before we get to that, we'll just do a very brief look into how we got to Complicated. Avril was born in Ontario, and her father named her Avril, which is the French word for April. In 1999, at 16 years old, she started performing more frequently, where she was spotted by a manager who sent some demo VHS tapes to his industry contacts. Record executives started visiting her, and she was invited down to New York in the summer of 2000, where she was eventually signed to Arista Records. The head of Arista was so impressed by her audition that he gave her a deal worth over a million dollars for two albums. I know the industry was really flourishing in the early 2000s, but that still seems insane for a debut artist. But after working with some of the top producers and songwriters, Avril couldn't get anything going. She was on the verge of being dropped by Arista already without even having put out any music. They kept pitching her songs written by other people, and that never felt right to Avril. They wanted her to be more of a folky singer-songwriter type pop star, and that never fit with what Avril wanted for herself in her own music. It never felt authentic to her. I know people are going to say, well, Avril's not authentic, and that whole punk look is just kind of capitalizing on the scene that she's not really, whatever. The point is, at 16, she felt like she was more of a punk type than a singer songwriter -y type. So that's what felt real to her. When she started working with a songwriting team called The Matrix, they realized right away that what the label was expecting out of Avril was not who she was at all. Avril started to find her place with the skaters in her high school, and she really found a community there and loved that aesthetic, so The Matrix pushed her to embrace that style more fully. They pushed her to make music that felt more authentic and comfortable for what she wanted. The Matrix then worked on a song that eventually became Complicated. Complicated gave Avril a musical direction. It set her on the path to have a greatest hits tour 22 years later. Without Avril insisting that she wanted to write her own songs, and The Matrix realizing the label needed to stop shoehorning her into the sound they wanted, we might have never known about Avril Lavigne at all. Of course, everyone knows how big of a song Complicated became, eventually peaking at number two and staying on the charts for like over 30 weeks. It's consistently ranked in the top 100 singles of of the decade, and like every breakout single of the early 2000s, it needed a strong music video to play on MTV. So in March of 2002, Avril and her touring band, the guys in the video, headed to Eagle Rock Plaza in Los Angeles to record the video. It was directed by the Malloys, who were two brothers who had worked with other prominent rock bands like Weedus, Foo Fighters, MXPX, Lit, Blink-182, and American Hi-Fi, just to name a few. They kind of knew that scene pretty well. I'm sure you've all seen the video, but if you have you should probably pause this and go watch it because that's kind of the whole point of this video. It's worth watching if only for that nostalgic hit of the like early 2000s mall and skate culture. For that first album, Avril worked with mostly studio musicians, but while she was preparing a tour to support it, the label tried to find musicians to put around her that would fit that style. For bass, they turned to Mark Spikaluk, who was playing bass and singing in a band called Closet Monster. When he was young, Mark's family moved to a few different places in Canada, eventually settling in Ajax, Ontario, where he formed the band Closet Monster, with some high school friends in 1997. He also got really into hockey, playing competitively while in school. He said before joining Avril that he worked at a goalie training camp shooting pucks at the goalies, like 500 pucks an hour or something like that. When he was 17, Mark started the record label 
underground operations, which eventually became one of the biggest independent labels in Canada. But Mark created it and ran it out of his mother's basement, originally intending it to basically just release music by his band Closet Monster, who were probably too political and anarchist for mainstream labels. They signed bands like Abandon All Ships, Protest the Hero, and Lights, before eventually shutting down in 2016. Mark joined Avril's band in 2002 and seemed to click pretty well with her initially, but he wasn't in the band for all that long. He was there long enough to be in the videos for Complicated and Skater Boy, but he left later in 2002 to focus more on Closet Monster and Underground Operations. He even played bass for Sum 41 for a bit. While he didn't have a massive performing career after he left Avril's band, he's still probably the easiest guy to trace because he did a bunch of different stuff. He kept playing with Closet Monster until the group broke up in 2005. He then shifted his attention to the business side, becoming the youngest head of A&R in the history of Universal Music Canada. He even ran the AR department for Gene Simmons' short-lived label. With Underground Operations and the bands he signed to that label, he was able to get some production credits on some pretty interesting albums, though I'm not sure exactly how involved he was or if he just got those credits for being the head of the label. He also started a company called Cloud Empire Creative that called itself, quote, We are a small band of specially skilled comrades synergizing our energy, strengths, and talent for the benefit of one collective goal. End quote. As of the time that I wrote this video, that website didn't exist anymore, so I'm assuming that company is now defunct. He was cast as a personality for several different TV shows, including Much Music's Disband, which was where a bunch of amateur bands worked with a music mentor before they performed in front of a panel of judges trying to get a label deal or whatever. Mark was one of the judges, along with Hannah Simone, who played Cece in New Girl, which is kind of a really interesting connection for me. Then, from 2012 to 2014, he appeared on YTV's Next Star, which was a reality competition show where they tried to find Canada's best singer under the age of 15. In 2011, after getting injured snowboarding, he was instructed to try yoga for his recovery, and that changed his life. He and his wife, Juliana, started a vegan yoga holistic health media brand called Boho Beautiful that has since become like one of the biggest and most followed brands in that space on the internet. They've released books, gone on tours, been featured in a ton of interviews, and just become really popular in that niche. He also started a podcast, because of course he did, that he still hosts with his wife. So I'd say Mark did pretty well for himself. One of the other early band members who wasn't in the complicated video, but I still want to talk about, also played in Closet Monster. Jesse Colburn, who was a rhythm guitarist, was born in Ajax, Ontario, and formed Closet Monster with Mark and their other high school friends. He also joined Avril's band in 2002, I'm guessing after the complicated video, when he was 21 years old. He ended up staying with Avril far longer than Mark, leaving in 2004, so he's in more stuff that Avril got to do during that like incredibly successful start of her career. He's also got the distinction of being the first person that Avril Lavigne dated after she became famous. They never really talked about it or went public with the relationship, but they were photographed kind of very clearly in a relationship gotta love the paparazzi. But by November of 2003, Avril was publicly dating someone else, so it's probably easy to say that they had broken up by that point. So that also might mean that he's the inspiration for some of those early songs, maybe. Who knows? I, probably Avril. He left because he wanted to focus on doing his own work instead of working very closely with his ex-girlfriend. I can understand that. He kept playing in Closet Monster until the band broke up in 2005. He stayed pretty connected with Mark, and the two of them kept working together, like in that company Cloud Empire that I talked about earlier. He also worked with a band called Stereos that Mark had discovered as part of that disband show, though they went by Stand By Me at the time, and they were convinced to change their name because of kind of obvious copyright issues. Jesse has a few writing credits for them. Since then, he's mostly worked as a music composer, largely freelance for some pretty big media companies, but also at a company called Imprint Music. I think he was like a staff composer there. He's worked on shows like Blown Away and Drink Masters on Netflix and My Little Pony and some shows for CBC. As far as I can tell, he's still friends with Mark. He's still out there doing his music composing thing. He plays in a band called Tragic Hearts, but it looks like that's more of a passion project than anything they're taking all that seriously. I'm sorry if you can like hear music in the background. My neighbors are playing music very loudly. I'm not sure if the mic is picking it up. I'll find out in the edit. The other guitarist in the video, Evan Taubenfeld, was the only non-Canadian since he was born in Baltimore, Maryland. He has a younger brother who is a music director for Casey Musk, 
Graves, and he fell in love with music early, first learning the drums and playing drums for a band called the Suburbanites when he was a teenager. Then after hearing Nirvana, he switched to guitar and taught himself how to play. Then he started a band called Spinfire with his friend Matt, who would go on to play drums in the metal band Periphery. But the rest of the members of Spinfire wanted to go to college, so Evan recorded some of his own music and started sending that to some connections he made through working in Spinfire. That demo eventually got into the hands of Arista, who invited him to New York to audition for Avril's band. He got the job, but he got it after the first album was already recorded, so he had a heavier hand in the second album. And I've heard it said that he became Avril's best friend through working with her. I'm not sure if that's true. Might have been at the time. No longer is. Who knows? Again, probably Avril. He said when he first heard Avril's music, he was really impressed by it. He said, quote, my first impression was honestly just like, man, this is a special artist and I want to be around it, end quote. In 2004, he got signed as a staff writer at EMI, so he left Avril's band, but he stayed around the Avril orbit. He co-wrote a few more songs for her and he even joined her on tour in 2011 when he was the opening act. Evan did his own music for a while, kind of under his own name, but also under a title called Blacklist Club. He released his debut solo album in 2010 called Welcome to the Blacklist Club. He toured as a solo artist for a while and worked with MTV on a show called Kaya, Kaya, I'm not sure. He then mostly worked as a producer and songwriter before going full-time in the business direction, staying in music publishing and running a company called Mighty Seven Songs Publishing for a bit. He did mention a while ago that he'd be interested in releasing more songs, but he's staying on the music side for now. He's running a and r for a company called crush music i will say there is some online debate on whether it's jesse or evan in the video i saw some fan articles describing the complicated video that say that it is clearly jesse i'm not familiar enough with the lore of avril's early band to know who joined when and who would be there for the complicated recording but i will say from just kind of looking at it and <laughs> looking at what they looked like back then Seems to me it's clearly Evan. I'm like 98% sure it was Evan in the video. The last guy in the video, Matt Braun, played with Avril the longest. Matt was born in Ajax, Ontario, and started playing drums when he was 12 years old. In high school, he started playing in a band called Second Opinion with Jason McCaslin, who played bass in Sum 41. He was also briefly in a band called Norman, but he quit after like a year because he didn't click with the rest of the guys. Before joining Avril's band, he was working at a credit bureau, telling people why they weren't approved for loans and getting yelled at all day. So I would say it was probably an improvement to go out on the road with Avril. In 2002, a friend of his who had the same management company as Avril mentioned that Avril was trying to get a band together, so Matt flew down to New York to audition and got the job. He also got to do a little bit of songwriting with Avril. He was a co-writer on the song Freaking Out from her second album. In 2004, while Avril took a little bit of a break from music to try and get an acting career going, Matt worked as a studio drummer for other Canadian rock bands like The Operation and The New Cities. Matt left the Avril Lavigne band in 2007. Since then, he's kind of kept a low profile. He's got married, he's got two children. Most of his Instagram is just him with his family or like playing golf and stuff, not really about the work he's doing. And he hasn't posted in almost five years. So I don't exactly know what Matt is up to these days. If you happen to watch this video, Matt, feel free to give me an email and let me know what you're doing. So that's the story of complicated music video and who those guys were and what happened to them and kind of inadvertently the story of Avril Lavigne's first band and what happened to those guys. I thought it was really fascinating to dig into this. Again, I might be the only one who even cares about it, but if you did enjoy the video, consider giving it a like, and please consider subscribing. It's free. You can always unsubscribe if you don't enjoy it, but don't want to miss out on more stories like this from Music History.